Okay, here we are in chapter 3. We're looking at chapter 3, section 1, called Vectors and Scalars. And I'm on page 50 in the textbook. A scalar is a quantity which can be described completely by just using a number and a unit. So, some things that are scalars could be um, distance, One might say, I live five miles away. Another thing that could be a scalar could be time. Somebody could say 25 seconds. Another thing that's a scalar could be um, speed, uh, a car could be traveling at 30 meters per second on the highway. <clears throat> so basically a scalar is something that can be described simply by using a number um, and not a direction. Okay. Some other things could be um, mass. Something could be 10 kilograms. Another thing could be temperature. It could be 27 degrees Celsius in this class. Um, another thing could be volume. We could talk about two cubic meters. Okay. All of these things um, could be described solely by using just a number, and there would be no direction associated with it. A vector is going to be a quantity, a quantity that has both a number and a direction. Now, when I say number, the technical word to talk about that number in physics is going to be called the magnitude. Okay, so, um, and the direction is simply going to be an angle, and we'll use the words north, south, east, or west, or something to that effect, but we have to give a very exact definition of the direction. So, this, these things are called vectors. They have a little bit more detail to them. For instance, what things could be considered a vector? Um, a velocity could be considered a vector. If I say someone is driving 20 meters per second east, you could be listening to um, radio chatter on one of those um, shows where they have the... Um, police showing a chase, someone is fleeing the police, and they might say the suspect is on a certain road, traveling at a certain speed, and they'll always give the direction, because if other police are going to be involved with the chase, they have to know which direction they should be going. Um, velocity. Uh, there's something called displacement. Displacement is not exactly distance, it's a little bit more. So if I told you I lived approximately 30 miles south of the school, that's different from if I just told you if I lived 30 miles away from the school. By saying I live 30 miles south of the school, you have a better idea of, you know, where I'm from, if I'm a North Shore person or a South Shore person or on the West. Um, <clears throat> there's something called force, which is a vector. A force is a push or a pull, so a force is a vector. So if I had a piece of furniture that was too heavy for me to move by myself, I might ask somebody to give me a hand, help me move this piece of furniture across the room. Well, what they would probably want to know is, which way do I want the furniture pushed? Do I want it to the right of the room or to the left of the room? Do I want it pushed to the front of the room? So 
force is something called a vector because it has a direction. So the units we use with forces are newtons. So somebody might push on a box with 50 newtons of force. And they could be pushing it north. Okay. So here, you want to be careful. It'll have a unit which just has the capital letter N for newtons. But capital letter N for newtons is not the same as the direction, uh, which would be symbol, uh, using the symbol of capital letter N, which represents north. So we have to be careful. There's, there's two different things. So all of these things are vectors. So in, um, in, in formulas, vectors are represented with arrows over the numbers. So in formulas, so you could have a formula. So we, we've learned about uh, some formulas in chapter two. Here we are in chapter three. There, there could be a formula that looks like this. The formula could be looking like this. Now what this formula means is V final. This is the final velocity equals V initial, the initial velocity, plus A is an acceleration and t is the time. So we're multiplying the time by the acceleration. So if it's a vector quantity, we're going to end up putting an arrow on top of it. And it looks like this. So the thing called a velocity, that's a vector. And it has an arrow on top of it. Here's a velocity again. It's a vector. This thing here is called an acceleration. You can be in a car and you can accelerate your car, you accelerate forward. You can also decelerate your car if we're accelerating backwards, basically. We would be hitting the brakes, we'd be decelerating. Acceleration is a vector. Time is not. Time is something called a scalar. So we leave time just as it is with no arrow on top of it. In chapter four, we'll be introduced to a very famous formula, and it's called this. It's basically Newton's second law of motion, where we say F, a force, is equal to mass times an acceleration. Well, a force is a vector, so we'll put an arrowhead on top of the force. Mass is a scalar. There's no direction with that. But there is a direction associated with acceleration, so we'll put an arrowhead on top of this. Okay. So as you're looking through the textbook and you're reading the formulas, anytime you see a symbol which has an arrowhead on top of it, they're just trying to tell you that particular type of a symbol represents a force, and there is a certain direction associated with that. Um, force is a push or a pull. You, you really just can't push or pull on anything without applying a certain direction. Anything you ever pushed on, you have to be pushing in a certain direction to it. Okay, <clears throat> okay so we're still on vectors. When we're talking about diagrams, because for most of the word problems we have, I can draw a diagram to represent what's happening. So vectors are going to be represented in diagrams by arrows by themselves. So a vector um, will be represented Um, the arrows should be proportional to each other. So what does that mean? Well, if I had a displacement vector, a displacement vector basically is talking about the shortest distance between two points from the starting point to the ending point. So if I said I have a displacement vector of um, 10 Newton, uh, sorry, 10 meters east, then I could represent that with an arrow, and I'll draw the arrow a certain line, 
a certain length. Okay, that arrow represents 10 meters going to the east. I almost always use the Cartesian coordinate system where going to the right is considered east. In the same case, if I had a vector that said 5 meters east, I could represent that in a diagram by trying to draw something half this length. So the first vector you draw, you set a scale. And so a 5 meter vector going to the east should be half this length. So I would represent it like this. And I'm not saying we have to take out a ruler and make sure everything is exactly proportional. It's just a representation. If I were to say 5 meters going to the west, Well, that would be a vector that would be the same length as this one, but the arrowhead would be changing. It would be going this way. So again, I didn't measure it, but it's approximately the same length as this one. It's approximately half the length of this one. If I were to say five, um, if I were to say ten meters going to the north, then I could represent that vector by going like this. So that would be pointing towards the north. While I'm doing this, what I'm basically doing is taking the Cartesian coordinate system that we learned in school, and I'm superimposing the north, south, east, and west grid on top of it. So we had a number line. And we said going this way would be in the positive x direction, and going this way would be in the negative x direction. And then we said going this way up here would be in the positive y direction, and going this way would be the negative y direction. So that, that right there, what you're looking at, um, has a name to it, and it's called the Cartesian coordinate system. It was a system discovered by Rene Descartes. And there, thus, thus we have his name. It's Rene Descartes. We have right here Cart. And it's Cartesian coordinate system. And he was the one who tried to figure out that we could position armies on a map if we superimpose the map and this X and Y grid system. And then it might be easy to talk about how we're going to move the army so far in this direction and so far in this direction. But at the same time, if we did take a map on a map that you uh, would look at, usually going this way, they talk about north. And going this way, they usually talk about south. And going this way, they usually talk about going east. And going this way, they usually talk about going west. So for the entire course, I'm going to teach the course as if we're using the Cartesian coordinate system. So if I have an object moving to the right, in the word problem, I'll say that's going to the east. I'll give it a positive sign with the x. If something is moving to the west, I'll give it a negative sign. If something is moving towards the north, I'll give it a positive sign in the y direction. If it's moving towards the south, I'll give it a negative sign. We can only use north, south, east, and west if we're kind of looking down on a map, if we're talking about a top view, looking down. If we talked about an apple falling out of a tree, then north, north does not point in the upward direction. You know, if you, if you take your finger and point straight up towards the sky, that's not north. If you were going to drive up north to go skiing or something, you wouldn't be driving up into the sky. So I can only use these type of symbols here if I'm talking about a top view. If it was a front view, like we had an apple falling from the tree, um, I could still use the negative Y because when the apple falls from the tree, that's what it would be doing and it would be falling to the ground. So I could have the ground right here, and I could have a tree right here. And I could have an apple right here, which is falling downward. And in this particular case, it would be falling down in the negative y. So if we talk about something called a displacement, what I would do is I would pick the starting point, And I would pick the ending point, And I would say, how did the apple get from the starting to the ending point, it was displaced this way. 
So because I have a negative there, I would say that the displacement of the apple would equal something with the negative number associated with. So let's just say this apple fell 10 meters out of a tree. I would write negative 10 meters. And the negative sign right there is a way that tells me that displacement is going in this direction, in the downward direction. So chapter 3, section 2 says we can add vectors graphically. So what that means is, so we can draw these vectors tip to tail. So what that means is I'm going to draw as many vectors as I want. Let and then I'm going to just I can list them and then I can draw them. So for instance, let's say if I were to add um, two vectors, okay. Let's say I had a first vector and I said it is going to be someone is going to walk uh, 25 meters to the west, and then I said the second leg of the journey, someone's going to walk 55 meters to the east. Okay. If I wanted to add these vectors graphically, the idea would be to draw them tip to tail. So you see, if I had the x-axis, the Cartesian coordinate system, let's just say we start in the middle. So what the person's going to do is they're physically going to walk to the west, and that's over here. And east would be going this way. So if they walk to the west, and this is now representing 25 meters. So I've drawn one single arrow here. Now when they get to this end result, now they're going to do the second thing. Now they want to walk to the east 55 meters. So as we go and walk 55 from this point here, I'll go underneath it a little bit, we're going to go over 55 meters. Okay. So I placed the starting point in not a great spot. Now I've erased the arrow. So what just happened is we started here and we've ended here. When we add vectors graphically, we draw each of them where the tip of one arrow would be. We start by putting the tail of the next one and we just continue along the way. So our vector, when we, when we add vectors graphically, um, the result when we add is called the resultant. So this thing called the resultant, it's the result that we get when we add up vectors. So what would be the result if we went here? And we started at the origin of the Cartesian coordinates. We went to the west 25 meters, then we turned around, and then we walked 55 meters to the east. The resultant would be the distance from the starting dot to the ending dot. So if I draw a solid line from the start to the end, that's the resultant. Okay. And graphically speaking, that's the way it's pointing. The resultant is a vector that's pointing towards the right, and it's going to be 20, um, sorry, it's going to be 30 meters going to the east. So the resultant in this case is 30 meters east. Okay, so um, there's another way I could, I could show that. I could add those vectors using math.
So I can also add those vectors using math. Let's go back to the last example. I said the person is going to walk 25 meters west. And then the second thing they're going to do is they're going to walk 55 meters to the east. So you see, if I uh, use the Cartesian coordinates, then this would be the positive x, and this would be the negative x. And then I superimpose the idea of east going to the right and west going to the left. Then what comes up? This is an x. It doesn't look like an x. This is an x. Okay. So what comes out of that is I could add these things using um, a math table. So in this particular math table, let's say that these are going to be my x components. And let's say these are going to be my y components. Okay. So if I walk just to the west, so if I go and I go 25 meters to the west, what I'm doing is I'm taking a journey, and in the x direction it's going negative 25 meters. How far have I moved in the y direction? None. I haven't gone up or down at all because I've only gone to the west. So this could be zero. Um, now, I want to walk 55 meters going to the east. So I could, where I am, where I've ended, I could go this way. And that would be positive, because I'm going in the positive x direction. That means east. So this would be positive 55 meters. And how far have I moved in the y direction? None. I haven't gone up or down. So my y component is zero there. Okay. So when I add these up, if you just take out your calculator, negative 25 plus a positive 55 would give you overall a positive 30 meters and nothing there at all. So the resultant is going to equal 30 meters to the east. And that's the same answer we just had on the screen a moment ago. Okay. So you can, you can add vectors using math. You can add vectors um, graphically. Uh, the math is always going to be more precise, unless you're perfect at drawing um, everything to scale. Then it won't come out to be, to be exact. Okay, so let's try to add some um, force vectors. And let's see what's going to happen here. So we're going to add some force vectors. I'll give you three different cases. So case um, A, let's say I'm going to push on a box. So here's the top view of the box. Okay. Uh, let's say I'm going to push with a force of 10 newtons going to the east. And I'm going to have a friend who's going to help me, and they're going to push with a force of 10 newtons going to the east. Now this is a top view. So we have 10 newtons here and 10 newtons here. So what you would get if you added them graphically, you would get something like this. That would be 10 newtons. And if you took the other one, this would be 10 newtons. And what you come up with is, hopefully you can see, the resultant comes out to be 20 newtons. Okay? And it's pointing to the right, so that would be to the east. If you decided to use a table for that particular one, you could say the x components and the y components and keep them separate. So you could say 10 newtons going to the east. That is a vector which is going to be just plus 10 here and 0. And you could say an additional 10 newtons going to the east. The first one would be you pushing. The second one would be your friend pushing. So this is positive 10 newtons and 0. And when you add those up, it comes out to be positive 20 newtons. Um, and that means 20 newtons going to the east. So you can see there's a few different ways. We could do it um, by graphing it, and then we add them tip to tail, and you can see. And the tip to tail piece would be from the overall start to the overall end. And we want to draw the one straight line that goes from the overall start to the overall end. 
How about if I gave you a different example? How about example B? Top view of a box. I need to push this thing. So I'm pushing on it with a force of 10 newtons going to the east. Um, I'm not able to push it by myself, so I ask a friend, help me push this box across the room. They're not a very smart friend, and what they do is they push like this. So what's going to happen in this case, if I needed to draw this one tip to tail, I would end up drawing it like this. I would be here, and I would push with 10 newtons. Um, and then my friend, where I have the tip of one, I will then put the beginning of the next arrow, the tail, and go like this. And my friend is pushed like that. So you see, I started right here, and I've ended right here. What is my distance from my starting point to the ending point? If they were superimposed on each other, you would say that that's zero. There is no distance between them. So my resultant would equal zero newtons. That doesn't say on, it says zero newtons. So I could draw it, and I could try to add them graphically, tip to tail. If I went to a graph and tried to do something like this, let me just erase this one a little bit. These are the x components and the y components. So the first one was going to be 10 newtons going to the east. And the second one was going to be 10 newtons going to the west. Oh, my mistake. I said my friend wasn't too smart, and they ended up pushing to the west, but I didn't write west. I wrote east. So I apologize for that. This is to the west. So you see, going to the east, I would consider the Cartesian coordinate system. That is a plus 10. And going to the west... On the Cartesian coordinate system, it would be going to the left, and that would be minus 10. So when I add these up, it comes out to be 0 newtons, and that's exactly what I said over here. So they agree. This one's a tricky one. How about if I had two force vectors? I'm going to push on a box, so the first one is me. I'm going to push on the box with 10 newtons of force to the east. Okay, that N, remember, is a unit. It means no, um, newtons. It doesn't mean naught. And I'm going to have a friend who's also going to push on the box simultaneously with 10 newtons going to the north. Okay. What would the resultant be? So I want to add these things up and find the resultant. And remember, that word resultant means what is the result when we add up these vectors. Well, in this case, draw it, and maybe you'll see something. So if we draw this... Is the box. This is me pushing on the box 10 newtons, and I'm going to the east, which is to the right. Here's my friend pushing on the box. This is 10 newtons going to the north. So what we're doing is we're looking at a top view. We're not looking at a front view. We're looking at a top view of this box. What's the overall force that the box is feeling? How much total force is actually pushing the box? And when I do this, a lot of times students will just try to add up these numbers. You can't add vectors the same way as you add up numbers. If they're not pointing in the same direction or the opposite directions, it becomes a little bit more complicated. So, But if you try to draw it tip to tail, let me write my force vector first. I'm doing this. Okay, if I drew the Cartesian coordinate system, it would look like that. My force vector is going like this. It's going to the right. And that's 10 newtons going to the east. And my friend is here, and they're pushing with 10 newtons, and they're going to the north. So the idea is that I started right here, and I'm ending up here. And the resultant is the straight line from the starting point to the ending point. So in this particular case, the straight line would be here. That is going to be the resultant vector. So, do you know enough to come up and say, what do you get if you have, you can see I have a triangle right there. The triangle has a base of 10 and a height of 10. How would you go about getting the 
hypotenuse of this triangle. So now, now we need a little bit of math uh, to come up with how to get this. But just so you have an answer when you're probably trying to do it, what I would end up using is I would use the Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem um, is something that you should all know and love. And it's basically a rule that says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So it says take the base and square, take the height and square, and that's going to equal c, which is the hypotenuse. So in this particular picture, the base would be the letter a, and the height would be the letter b, and the hypotenuse would be the letter C. Okay. So if you tried to do that, you would come up with um, a number, and you would say 10 newtons square it plus 10 newtons, and you square it, and you'd equal C squared. And if you did that on your calculator, you would calculate that C would come out to be 14 point fourteen newtons. And it's moving at a certain direction. We would need to talk about the direction, and the direction would be right here. And in this particular case, if the base and the height of a triangle are the exact same numbers, then this must be going at an angle of 45 degrees. So I would write at 45 degrees north east and all of this together would be the answer okay so as I said earlier this is a vector and vectors have both magnitude and direction this piece right here is the magnitude and this piece right here is a complete direction it's showing how we're going 45 degrees northeast so that would be how to do that particular problem we're adding two vectors and we can use the graphical method and here is kind of a mathematical method.